And they call these bozos who conveniently show up to deal with the problem with a fake electronic light show. Everything was fine with our system until the power grid was shut off by Dickless here. They caused an explosion. Is this true? Yes, it's true. This man has no dick. Welcome back to Think It Critical. This is Wes. And some of you may have heard the incident with Tom King at a Comic-Con this last weekend where Tom King came out boasting about bullying a comic book fan, uh, you know, and, and kind of chewing him out, cursing him out, getting him kicked out of the con. It was a very bad look. My good friend Aaron Sparrow joins me to talk about that. But there's been a little bit of new information since we actually had our conversation before it came out today. So I did want to clarify, yes, I am aware that Tom King uh, sent out a nice big long tweet thread. And in that, he kind of recants his story. There are certain bits of it that stay true um, to, I don't know, the essence of the, the original one, but it's certainly uh, not quite as inflammatory. And some of you say, well, Wes, why would you even put the, the original video out? Everything's changed. Nothing's changed. He's just confirmed that he's a liar, which is something that Aaron himself asserts in the video. He didn't exactly believe him. Uh, he also thought maybe he was bullying somebody that could be challenge let's put it that way and what is the immortal words of of um, president obama never underestimate tom's ability to fuck things up and he makes things worse because first off he was certainly overstating according to the recant when he re-clarified what he did what he had initially said but he still bullied the guy he still uh, was rude about it and then he decided that he was going to brag as if that was something uh, worth bragging about Tom King is still a douchebag. It takes nothing away from the conversation that you're about to hear from Jay, uh, from Aaron Sparrow myself, other than to reinforce essentially everything that we said that the man is not to be trusted. And, you know, he's somebody that, that does not like fans. You can see the way that he treats people. Uh, this is the one of many incidents. He keeps having these things come up. And, uh, you know, that, that's too bad. Apparently, according to his new account, he wasn't quite as rude to the comic book fan, but it doesn't make him look any better. It just makes him look worse because, uh, yeah, qu quite frankly, he lied. <laughs> he, he certainly embellished. If you want to use the word embellished and still lying, he over embellished the things that have actually happened. Also, there have been several people that reached out to the convention itself, you know, via their their you know, they went to the website. There's a contact. They contacted and said, was anyone kicked out for not wearing a mask? No, no one was kicked out for not wearing a mask. And that Jeff directly goes against the statements of Tom King. There are a lot of comic book creators that are out here championing Tom. And like, oh, it sounds like you were completely in the right. You're so, you know, you were, you were just, uh, you were being so polite to this comic book fan. This isn't like, this isn't the train you want to jump on. The, the Tom King train is not a winner let's just put it that way the guy's uh, reputation drops further and further every single time he speaks or uh, goes out there and decides to address anything because quite frankly he doesn't know how to communicate with people like he does not have, know how to use social media <laughs> and go out there and communicate anything he just ma makes himself look like an ass he does that over and over so to the jimmy palmiotis and the cully hebners and all the other creators that want to jump in there and and sit there and try and, and lend, lend credence to Tom King being in the ride in here, I think you're probably going down the wrong track. But, hey, it's your life. If that's the train that you want to hit your wagon to, go right ahead. But I think it's been proven over time that the Tom King train is not a winner. And I, I say, like I said, the essence and the spirit, the spirit of the video that you're about to, the conversation you're about to watch between Aaron and myself all stands. Some of the details change. Tom King's still a douchebag. He's still repugnant. And uh, this is just another example of that. So let's bring my good friend Aaron Sparrow on the channel, and we'll talk about Tom King's original tweet and our thoughts about the way that he treats people, specifically comic book customers, and why he's the problem, or he and his ilk are the problem. Let's put it that way. Pathetic. Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes. It's time to bring my social media correspondent back on the channel, comic book writer Aaron Sparrow, a man that that uh, you you viewed the tweets and I don't know. Uh, well, first of all, how you doing, Aaron? 
I'm doing really well this morning. Uh, super, uh, super busy day, but uh, you know, always got time to uh, to pop on here and talk about the latest nonsense from uh, comic quote unquote professionals. It's crazy when you think about just douchebags in comic books. The name that really comes to mind for me is Mark Wade. But really, Tom King is making a go at it as being like the biggest douchebag in comic books. And really, Mark Wade hasn't been relevant as a comic book writer in quite some time. You know, Tom King not that long ago was a Batman writer. So as far as like somebody that's done something important, it's really hard to top this guy. And I think this week he took it to another level. We know that his writing's bad, what he did with Wally West, what he's done to Mr. Terrific, what he's done to Adam Strange, and, uh, you know, Batman and other characters where he just destroys them. But I, I think, really, his his own persona, the person that he is, is more repugnant than his actual writing these days. It's certainly uh, seeming to bear out that way. I, um, yeah, I, I was really, uh, you know, after, uh, after the Jay Lee debacle where he tried to get Jay Lee completely uh, attacked by the Twitter mob uh, for working with somebody that he personally didn't like. Uh, you know, I, I didn't think that I could have a lower opinion of him. And yet here we are with, uh, with these latest, uh, these, this latest tweet that he put out. So for people who don't, don't know, and I imagine some of you do, that Tom, Tom King essentially is bragging within the last 24 hours that he was at a con. You know, he, he decided to go to this con and this convention had rules. You had to be, I think you had to be, uh, had to have the vaccination and all that stuff. And a fan of his, obviously a fan of his Rorschach, who was wearing a Rorschach mask, gets up to the line to Tom King. He pulls his mask off and I guess Tom King loses his shit, gets the, the fan, like he berates the fan and then gets the fan kicked out of the convention. Yeah, this is if... Um if we assume that the story is true, which with Tom King, uh, you know, Tom King was in the CIA. Uh, he is uh, a liar and a propagandist. You know, we, that, that's pretty much established by the job that, uh, that he did. And, uh, you know, we have to take him at his word that this actually happened. Uh, you know, what probably actually happened, I would imagine, is, uh, you know, if, if any of this story is not just fabricated for Twitter likes, because we know Tom King will do that as well. Uh, he is a virtue signaler. He is indeed, and you know those back back pats. His his life is apparently so devoid of any kind of meaning that he has to get people on Twitter to give him internet pee pee touches in order to make himself feel uh, feel good about himself. Feel so anything? We, yeah, we have to assume that this story is probably fabricated or at least largely embellished. But uh, you know, we'll uh, we'll go ahead and we'll take it at uh, you know let's just take it at face value. Uh, if indeed this is what happened, wow. Um, how hard is it, number one, to just simply say to somebody who probably, in their excitement, you know, they're dressed as Rorschach, you're the current writer of Rorschach, or, or a Rorschach, not the Rorschach, uh, much as I don't think that, you know, Tom King being the Batman writer means that he ever wrote Batman. He wrote himself <laughs> as Batman. He wrote himself as uh, Mr. Miracle. You know, everybody is just kind of a takeoff of his own uh, self-insert and his own sad sack kind of persona. Uh, you know, oh, my PTSD, you know, it's like uh, nothing against people who, who genuinely have PTSD, but most people who have it don't use it as a constant shield and don't have to inject it into every single thing that they that they write. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people with trauma out there that, uh, you know, find a way to work through it without uh, making us pay, you know, four to five dollars a month for uh, for their personal therapy. So obviously, I don't have a really good opinion of Tom King, and, and that's largely because of his behavior and his writing. Uh but if we assume that this story is true, you imagine that a fan who, uh, you know, came up to meet the writer of Rorschach, dressed as Rorschach, in his excitement, uh, you know, and wanting to have a moment of, uh, of human connection with the creator, uh, pulls his, uh, his mask up, and Tom King, according to his own story, just absolutely freaks out and starts cursing, and, uh, and then has the fan thrown out of the show. What an absolute piece of garbage it would take, you know, you would have to be to, uh, to not only to do that, but then to go on social media and brag about it. Really? What's there to brag about? He's, he's basically, he's checking himself. He's making, he's letting everyone know what a piece of garbage he is, what a douchebag he is. Uh, you know, it's hard to see anybody. Some people, a lot of people aren't going to know about this, but why would you support this guy? He's such an a-hole. 
Well, you know, he's part of the current crop of creators that likes to abuse the customer and that for some reason is allowed to abuse the customer of the companies that they work for. You know, as much as uh, everybody's talking about, oh, you know, comics, you know, they're selling so well right now. They're selling better than they have in years. Uh, we're about to we're about to cut comics from you know one of the shops that I order for. We're about to cut the, we're about to cut DC entirely, and it's mostly because we can't move enough DC books anymore to make it worth the, uh, ordering them. The you know the fact of the matter is the discount that we're getting based on the amount of books we can move is not worth it, and it's just it's continually shrinking, continually shrinking month by month. We're seeing more and more people drop titles, so. You know, you've got Brian Hibbs out there talking about how, oh, yeah, things are great. Oh, I'm having to close a store, though, because it's not worth hiring two new employees to replace the ones that are leaving. And, uh, oh, and, and you know, oh, the direct market's down in, in, in my shop. So, you know, it, it's one of those things where it's like I've heard from other I've heard from other shop owners that said they cut out new comics and there's their business is doing better. I've heard another one that cut out DC comics completely and they said none of their customers noticed. No, and that's really the sad thing is looking at the polls uh, for the uh, for the shop. Very little of it is DC. We we sell more Marvel than DC, which surprises me because Marvel's quality has been so bad. But Marvel has been able to kind of grab people into this speculation of you know continually throwing new books out there, new number ones with seventeen different covers, even for characters that don't deserve it. You know, you're going to be getting uh, <laughs> you're, we're getting a new Kazar series, and it has a bunch of covers, and it's like that's going to last you know eight issues before it gets canned but it doesn't matter because they'll have got the retailers to buy in they'll be able to jump out but you know so tom king is part of this group of of professionals that is allowed to abuse the customers and is allowed to talk down to them so of course he's going to brag about it because that's what gets him off that's what you know gets him the backpats from people like uh like dan slot who chimed in and was immediately like you know oh, I, rob sheridan see. losing his mind at anyone who would have a negative opinion of tom king's actions you guys having a fucking meltdown it's, really, it's I amazing. Even, I didn't even see yeah. that. Liz is, it's crash shared, and he's like one of the best, biggest losers you'll find on Twitter. I, and, I, I don't, yeah. I'm not even familiar. I, with you him. can you can see the tears on his phone through the tweets. What is this performative art of how scared people are? What the hell happened to men in this country? Oh, I'm so terrified to go outside. Oh, I'm so terrified to you know not have eight masks on. Oh, you know it's like just there is a there's a. I was reading this uh, this article, and it was basically an old um, some old information that the KGB had determined, and it was like it had o- it only took two months of concentrated fear to completely subvert people's uh, you know thoughts and to get them to buy into it, and we're going on two years, and obviously the uh, the force has a very powerful effect on the weak minded because you know th- these people are losing their minds with terror. If you're so scared of COVID, why are you even at a convention? Why are you at the convention? Yeah. Why are you at the convention? There may be somebody. That, who knows? What if they got a bloody nose? They have to take their mask off in front of you. These things could happen, Tom King. This is the real world. <laughs> like not the protective bubble that you wish you were living in. It's exactly right. And you know, the other the other thing that I thought about when I heard this story was you know, he berated this, you know, he berated this fan and, and had him thrown out of the convention because the fan took his mask off. Now, there's nothing in Tom King's story that suggested that he politely asked the fan to put his mask back on and the guy refused or got belligerent. There's nothing in his story. It's just, he took his mask off and I immediately started cursing, you know, and then had him thrown out of the show. Uh, number one, oh, you, you think I cuss a lot in, in my comics? You should see me in real life. Is that a flex? It, it, what does what that, what does that even mean? Like, am I supposed to be impressed that you curse a lot in your, in your personal life? Uh, you know, there's a, uh, there's a, pretty famous quote by Spencer Kimball that says profanity is the effort of a feeble brain to express itself for, uh, forcibly. And that's exactly what this came off as is like, Oh, you're such a tough guy. You yelled at a fan who, by the way, judging by the amount of fans that I have talked to at conventions might you know, still a very good chance of being autistic. Well, th- so, there's also the, the fact that Tom King, while he was on Batman, he did cut sales in half. He actually dipped below 70,000, which is really unheard of for Batman. And as soon as a new writer came on, they went right back above 130,000. It's not like Tom King is setting the world on fire. He's lost some opportunities. Most of what he's written lately is not very well acclaimed. He could probably use some type of goodwill out here rather than, um, you know, exposing himself to the massive douchebag that he really is. Well, I mean, I think I does, that- he doesn't understand how, how, what an asshole he comes off as in that tweet. 
they, well, I mean, they, he doesn't understand the audience. He doesn't understand the people that he's supposed to be writing comics for. Uh, you know, I don't believe that he is writing comics for anyone other than himself. I think that's very evident in his work. Uh, that's why it's so repetitive and predictable. Um, you know, it's just, it's always the sad sack man having to be propped up by the strong female character, which, you know, is uh, is pretty much, um, as I understand it, pretty much endemic. But you remember, on, he's, Tom King's the guy that on Father's Day wishes his mom a happy Father's Day. Yeah, I w- I was raised by a single mom too. She's got Mother's Day, but he's got a- he's that guy. He's the virtue signaling douchebag at DC Comics, and you know the comic books will be better off when he's moved on to whatever else he's going to fail at next. Well, I mean, uh, we we already uh, we already saw the uh, the New Gods movie that he was uh, writing uh, get canned, so you know we we dodged that bullet, which is uh, is quite nice because you know the last thing that I want I want is. Jack Kirby's fourth world represented to the larger audience of, uh, of cinema goers as, you know, Tom King's vision. That's, <laughs> the, Oh my God. Can you imagine just how people would feel about, uh, about the fourth world at that point? You know, it, it's such a rich and fantastic series of characters and, and stories, you know, just to have the main represent representation out there in, uh, in the public consciousness, be, uh, be guided by Tom King is just is a horrifying idea. What do you think the chances are that this fan was Asian? We know that he's had specific issues with uh, you know Jay Lee in the past and some other uh, Asian uh, people. I don't know Dean Kane is one that he's liked to attack. There's been a couple other instances. I mean, I don't think that this fan exists. I, I'm I'm now <laughs> it is mine. The, game, the fan was probably Asian too, so we could get a well. Some he more was very owning. specific in saying that it was Rorschach, and you know what that you know that that. Um, that seems like a uh, well, the guy was dressed as Rorschach, which means he's alt right. Am I right? You know, everybody praise me. Everybody give me my back pats. You know, um, I, honestly, I think that this tweet is probably the uh, the most engaging fiction that Tom King has written in his career. Uh, it's certainly gotten him more attention than uh, than his Batman run. Some people say, you know, any any publicity is good publicity. Uh, I don't I don't buy that. I, I think Tom King probably shouldn't be exposing himself and really owning himself. He think he thinks he's owning the fan, if that fan truly exists. But really, he's just owning himself, and and more people are going to keep walking away. And he's getting lower and lower profile projects at DC. You know, he started out as the Batman writer, then he's you know he's working on Superman, then he's doing a Wally West Flash story with Superman and Batman and Wonder Woman all in there. Harley Quinn, some other big name characters. Now he's on, uh, you know, Straight Adventures. You know, Rorschach, high profile character. Now he's on Supergirl, and next up he's got the movie or the Human Target. Uh, is he? Did I hear somewhere that he's uh, he's going to ruin Green Arrow soon? Uh, it's, uh, he's <laughs> he's the only lefty that could ruin Green Arrow, right? That, that feels like <laughs> a character right. everyone should embrace, but he'll he'll make <laughs> like, like well, great, depressed Green Arrow. Uh, yeah, it's um, well, you know, I look forward to Green Arrow having to be saved by Black Canary every month. Uh, you know, I, I say that in jest because I, I won't be reading it. Um, I, I avoid uh, Tom King books like the plague. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, I just I can't imagine if, even if this story were true. Congratulations, you uh, you alienated a fan, you humiliated somebody who wanted to meet you. Great job. You know, and what the I person like literally to- paid money to meet you. Yeah, you made it yeah, one of the worst up. experiences of their life. Yeah, you are a fucking team. champ. <laughs> Just absolutely ridiculous. You know, I when someone comes to me at a con, you know, and they've read my work, or or even if they haven't, even if they haven't, but they, you know, they like the character that I, I'm working on, and and they want to uh, they want to talk about it and maybe get invested in my work. I I believe that I have a personal responsibility, not only as a human being, but to the company that I'm working for, the character that I'm working on, the the property that I'm representing, I have a responsibility to put my best foot forward and to send that fan away with a great experience. You know, and if you've bought my books, you've supported my dream. You've supported me being able to tell fun stories, you know, which I love to do. And I love to connect with people that way. So, you know, he started off this tweet with, oh, I I love to see people at cons. He loves to see them and then he loves to bring them. There's an enormous butt. Yeah, so that he (laughs) he makes... uh, Everyone says that, that, right? I'm not trying to disrespect you, but here's how I'm going to disrespect you completely. Or I'm not a racist. Here's something completely racist. I love people at cods, but I absolutely hate them. Yeah, but but man, what, aren't they pieces of shit? 
<laughs> you know, it's just, it's absolutely disgusting that these companies have not curtailed these professionals. You know, they're representing your brand and they're running your brand into the ground. You know, your brand is in trouble. Comics are in trouble. More and more people are leaving. You know, there's this good speculator market going on right now that's, that's kind of keeping them afloat. But as we all know, with speculator markets, those bubbles burst. And the only thing that keeps people that you know keeps people coming back is good stories and being treated well. You know they won't they won't remember exactly how you you know what you said to them necessarily, but they'll remember how you made them feel. So you know when someone comes to me at a con, I want them to go away feeling great. Maybe they won't remember all the details of our conversation, but they'll remember that I took time to talk to them and I listened to them and, and you know we had a fun interaction. And then maybe you know maybe they buy your next project. Maybe they continue to support you. I, you know, I think that it's a symbiotic relationship, and professionals, unfortunately, have forgotten that, and uh, I'm not sure that Tom King in particular ever knew it. Well, I'm not really that sure he's ever been a professional. Sure, he's been paid, but he's never had that mindset. You know, I don't think he's ever really loved comics. I think he loves the idea of getting paid to use these characters to express his own personal feelings rather than to highlight the characters and really explore them and, and tell great adventures using the characters in their history. I think uh, he sees the characters in a lot different way, much like a lot of other creators, but not every other creator, you know, takes things to the, to the level that he does, which is just the repulsive nature in which they treat people. Yeah. It's, it's really sad that we've hit a point where so many creators are so selfish that these characters are just used as vehicles for their own personal agendas and their own, uh, you know, personal beliefs. Uh, you know, I, I miss the days when you had comics written by people who had had genuine life experiences and, uh, you know, had, had things to say with the characters that were born out of the characters themselves, you know, that approached the property saying, you know, not how can I tell my stories with the Fantastic Four, but what kind of interesting Fantastic Four stories can I tell? And uh, I think if comics is uh, is going to be saved, you know, at least uh, at least these mainstream characters, you know, in the direct market, um, th there has to be leadership uh, leadership changes from the top down uh, that uh, cleans out these people, these selfish creators that uh, that just want to do what they want to do and say what they want to say and uh, abuse people because it makes them feel good. And we need to get back to people who actually care about these stories, care about these IPs, uh, and want the fans to care about them as well. And I think until we do that, I think you're going to see more and more people go into uh, crowdfunded comics, you know, because the, the interest is still there. The interest is still there in comics. Uh, but it's leaving the direct market because of the unprofessional people that uh, they are putting in power. And it's uh, moving over to people that actually uh, care about the product and care about telling good stories. And with that, let me end on this. Let me give a shout out to uh, my friend. He's been my friend for years, Aaron Lepresti. He's got an, uh, an Indi uh, Indiegogo out there right now called Wraith of God. It's a, uh, a horror Western. It looks absolutely fantastic. If you guys have not checked it out, uh, go take a look at it. And uh, if you like what you see, back it, because uh, he is being attacked right now for daring to, uh, to break free of the mainstream and to go out on his own and to try something else. So, you know, he's, uh, he's trying to build a better future from his, for his family. He's one of the nicest guys in comics. I've never seen him talk ill of anybody or treat anybody poorly. Uh, that's a guy that you should be supporting instead of a guy like Tom King. And we should have him later on in the week talking about Malibu Comics and Wraith of God as well. But I can only echo your sentiments, Aaron Sparrow. I think a lot of people think comics need to be saved from the fans. No, comics need to see be saved from the creators. It's people like Tom King, Tom Taylor, and, and the like that are absolutely going to be destroying this medium uh, that we all love. And, and it will be unrecognizable if we let them remain in place, treat people like crap, and just destroy characters. I can't think of a better way to end. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs>